This is the Hasty Bake Roughneck Barrel Smoker. Now you might be looking at this and saying, well, that's not a barrel, that's, that's a square. Well, you'd be right, but this is Hasty Bake's answer to the barrel smoker. Now, if you're not familiar with the barrel smoker, a lot of times a barrel smoker is just like a 55 gallon drum is kind of what it looks like. Um, and then it's been, they, they convert them into smokers. And the idea behind them is, is that you get kind of a different uh, cook than you would like with an offset or something because you've got the fat and the and the grease from the food that you're cooking is dripping right down into the fire. It's over the fire cooking. And so it gives it a different flavor profile uh, when you cook and smoke that way. And if you're familiar with Hasty Bank, you know that they um, are kind of known for their Legacy 131 grills. That is one of their best sellers. Full disclosure though, they did reach out for this particular smoker um, and they asked me if I would be interested in doing a review video on it. So they sent this to me um, for free to be able to do that. But they also gave me the freedom to be honest and, and to kind of tell them what I like and what I don't like because this is a pretty new smoker. Now they've had a stainless steel version and they've had kind of the core 10, the kind of patina looking version. If you've seen any videos from Cowboy Kent, he has one of those and it's kind of, uh, kind of that weathered looking steel. And so they've had those couple of versions out for a year or so, but this one is brand new, the powder coated. Uh, and it worked well because my Legacy 131 is also powder coated. So it didn't hurt my feelings that they matched up. If you know Hasty Bank, this thing is built just like the Legacy, some of the, any of the other grills and, and stuff that they have out there. It is super heavy duty. When you lift this lid, I mean, you can tell you're lifting and, and you're opening a quality product. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed this before, but um, if you go into Home Depot or somewhere and you look at Traeger or some of those grills that are in the you know seven eight hundred dollar price range, a lot of times one of the first things I always notice, and it's always been a dig of mine when it comes to Traeger, is when you open that lid, I always feel like that just feels flimsy and I don't like that and so with something like this there this does not feel flimsy at all this thing doesn't twist it doesn't do anything this thing is it's all there now when we go down below what we see down here is we've got another door down here that opens up same thing we've got good heavy-duty quality steel everything here is heavy-duty and it's quality um, I cannot say enough about that. You've got a handle here on the front, um, and then you, it's, it's got the, uh, the springs around it to kind of help with heat. You've also got a handle on each side as well um, over here, and then you even have a handle back here on the back. And the purpose of the handle here on the back is, say you needed to transport it, you just lock it up here, You've got a lock there. You just lock that. And now we can lean this thing backwards and we can dolly this around wherever we need it to go. Now, opening this thing back up, let's talk about a couple of things here that are a little bit different. So, um, like I said, I've got the 131 grill that they have and the, the grates on it are just kind of those simple rounded, uh, kind of rounded steel grates that you see that you would see in like a Weber or anything, honestly. Well, these are a little different. These are actually laser etched, um, but these are kind of a, a totally different style. These are flat. This is not rounded. And so um, it's, it's a little bit different to, to clean this in my opinion, but I know that they did tell me they're working on a scraper for it. What I've found though, is that honestly, I've just got an old flat spatula here, a metal one that I don't use for anything. And I've just found that I just use it to clean. The version that I have was the loaded version and the loaded version came with four grates instead of just two because you've got you've actually got two different levels here that you can cook on we've got a level right here that we can cook on and then down about right here there's another level here where you can drop two more grates i've got two grates dropped down in there right now um, and then you may be kind of looking at this and saying what is that weird looking deal there well this is actually uh, for hanging ribs hanging meat things like that where it's helping to get the the distance between the fire and the meat and i'm going to guess that you could easily hang 12 racks of ribs in here, no problem. Uh, you've got plenty of room inside of this to be able to do something like that. And again, this is heavy duty steel. I mean, this is not, you're not gonna weigh that down with too many racks of ribs. Uh, it's definitely gonna be able to withstand anything you need it to do. If you didn't need another grate in there, you could center this up. You could do it however you wanna do it. You could hang ribs on one side. You could throw this grate in over here and do a pork butt over here. I actually did that a couple of weeks ago. Um, you've got plenty of room here to be able to do this uh, and to do quite a bit when it comes to that part of it. And I really do, I really like that. 
One downside I have, have found though when it comes to uh, cooking with this is that um, the, the height on the lid here, depending upon what you've got in here, might not necessarily allow it to close. So last weekend I was doing some baked beans in a uh, cast iron Dutch oven and I leave them open for a long time and I cook with them open. And then at a certain point, I like to go ahead and throw the lid on and close it down and let it cook for a while. Well, when I did that and I put the lid on, um, it wouldn't close. So the lid is just a little bit, not quite deep enough to be able to put a, uh, a Dutch oven or something like that right here on this top grate and still close the lid. So I did try and at the time to go ahead and to slide that Dutch oven down here, but there wasn't enough distance. I had stuff on this side and there wasn't enough distance here to be able to get my Dutch oven to drop down and to put them on that lower rack down below. So um, anyway, we may do and it still worked, but that was something that I did kind of want to mention is that, um, that I did run into that on that particular instance. Now we're moving on down. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, basically our firebox and our ashtray and all this stuff. So your firebox is here. Um, and then this is your ashtray here. Now I like to go ahead and just throw a little bit of aluminum foil in the entire bottom of the ashtray. Uh, just so that it helps to make cleanup a lot easier. Now, this is going to be one of those spots where I feel like this is probably my, uh, one of my few complaints about this thing is um, I feel like this is a little bit cumbersome to deal with and to use. Now, um, if you're familiar with barrel smokers though, most of the time, those barrel smokers, um, you're, you're taking the firebox in and out through the top. So that's not super handy either. So um, I, I think that it's a little bit of give and take here. As far as build quality though, this thing, it is stout, it is sturdy. Um, there are no issues with that. Uh, same thing with this ashtray that sits down here down below. And uh, we will, again, like I said, even though this is one of my negative things, I'm gonna save that to the very end. And I'm gonna talk about kind of what I don't particularly like about this, but then how I would also probably change it just a little bit as well. Now, you may have noticed too that right down here, this is where our vent control is at right here. We've got two vents here on the front. Very simple, very easy to adjust these and turn these however we need them to be. And then back here on the back, we've also got the exact same style of a vent right directly in the center on the back of that. Um, what I have found when it comes to uh, fire control and being able to how well it holds up a temp, it took me a little bit of getting used to because this thing will actually ramp up pretty fast, especially if you've got the top open. So you really want to manage it. And what I also have found is that I like to take this back one and I kind of take it to at least halfway closed um, or more. And then I do most of my control with the front after that. And that seems to be pretty well. This thing, like if I'm doing ribs or I'm doing anything like that, I can put this thing, I can dial it into 250. And once I get my vent set, it'll just sit there It'll run at 250, no problems. It works very, very well as far as that's concerned. Another thing too that I really like is that because of the ability for, to be able to close all of this stuff off so well, um, and because uh, if you didn't notice here, this, is, uh, this actually has a seal all the way around it. It's kind of one of those kind of fiberglass cloth kind of feeling. It's made for this type of application for grills and stuff. So it seals off really well so that when you're cooking with this thing, you're smoking with this thing, there's no smoke seeping out of anything anywhere. It's only coming right out that back and you don't have to use this to seal this up. And honestly, I don't even use it at all. The only time you would ever use that is if you were doing something during transport. That's the only thing that it's really needed for. When it comes to being able to, to turn all this and to close all this up, um, I was actually a little bit concerned because if you saw that firebox and stuff, it's a pretty good sized firebox. And I was afraid that it was gonna be hard to tell for sure, like how much charcoal do I need for this cook? If I'm doing an eight hour cook, how, how much charcoal do I need? I don't want it up too much, but I also don't want to have to constantly be adding charcoal as well. What I've found is it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can't really add too much because this thing is so well sealed that when you close the vents down, when you get done, it's going to kill it all. And like I said a minute ago, there's a lot of charcoal in here still left because it snuffs that fire out really, really fast 
because it's so well sealed. Now building up on how well this thing uh, holds smoke and, and doesn't leak, another thing I wanted to mention was because of that, I think that some of that uh, really impacts the quality of the smoke ring and the quality of just what a good smoke that you're getting on this stuff. So, um, so far I really like doing ribs on this. What I've found is that there's actually a color difference with this versus if I do one on my 131. Now, granted that is a grill that can smoke and this is just a smoker. So that's something to keep in mind. You're not really gonna wanna do burgers or steaks or anything on this. You're not gonna wanna try to crank this thing up to 450 degrees. You're really, it's not designed for this. This is more going to be just simply a smoker that most of the time you're gonna be below 300 degrees. Um, and, and that's kind of what it's designed for. If you go to cranking this thing up, you're gonna have issues with heat and different things like that. And so with that in mind, down here on the bottom, you've got a heat deflector. Now, I've used it a few times. This heat deflector is, it sets on top of your firebox. So you need to bring this out a little bit to be able to get to it. And I've found that when it comes to this thing, it's a little cumbersome to use. Um, so that's one thing I don't like about it there. I've got it on there, no problem now. Um, it's a little cumbersome to use. Um, and this is would be how you would add wood and things um, as you were cooking. You just fold that up and use it. But this is actually a different heat deflector than the other two models have. And the reason that they changed it up was they told me that they ran into an issue where people were would would were tending to crack this door a little bit in order to when they started their fire and to get things going if they wanted more heat. They were cracking this door and the heat directly being right here. Um, was messing up the powder coating right here on this edge. And so they decided to change up their heat deflector because the other one was more like a tray that just slid in above it. Uh, it was kind of how the style of it was. Honestly, I kind of probably prefer that style better. I feel like it's a little less cumbersome, but I understand why they did this style with this bale and everything being able to, to just throw your, your stuff in there this way. But I've just found so far, I've used it a couple of times, I found I honestly don't really need it for anything at this point so far that I've really seen. If you buy the base model of this, uh, the base model is $999. The base model comes without wheels, no wheels on it. Um, it doesn't have the thermometer. Um, and then it doesn't have the extra two grates for the second row. Those are the kind of the main things that separate it from the other. If you go to the fully loaded model, it's $12.49 for the fully loaded. And in my opinion, um, if, 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 you, if you don't want to spend the other $250, bucks, I do not think that you have to, especially if you're not going to be loading this thing up and tailgating or anything like that with it, uh, taking it places and stuff. It weighs 110 pounds, so I wouldn't want to spend a lot of time moving it around anyway. In my opinion, you wouldn't have to have the extra grates if you didn't want to. The only thing that I feel like gets you a little bit is the fat is this thermometer, and I feel like it's fairly accurate. Um, I know that I've I've checked my other one on my other Hasty Bake, and it runs very accurate. I have not checked this one uh, against a a Thermapro or anything yet, uh, but I'm assuming that it's going to be the same quality um, with this as well. And I haven't seen any kind of weird issues with this where it seems like it's way out of whack or anything like that. So I told you that I was going to tell you a few things that I didn't like, and I've kind of hit on those a little bit. Uh, my biggest issue, I think more than anything, is the firebox setup and the ashtray setup. Now, my Legacy 131 has probably spoiled me a little bit on that, um, but I feel like that it's a little bit cumbersome um, and let me show you what I'm kind of talking about when it comes to pulling out this ashtray and, and doing some of this. So I've found that when I open this up and I pull this ashtray out like this, that there's a certain point where it all tips forward. And I, I guess that's kind of by design. I don't particularly love it. Um, so let me move this over here. I'll, I find that it's it's a little bit cumbersome uh, to deal with when I take this firebox out, if I need to do anything, if I need to change the ashtray, it's a little bit cumbersome. Um, I feel like that this could actually probably be uh, mitigated a little bit by simply putting a, some kind of, if, I, if you could take it right here 
and put a metal piece in here that would allow it so that um, it ran all the way to the back, all the way to the back, so that it almost had like a something that was holding it in, so that when it got, even if it got too far out, it wouldn't fall down. The it, by leverage, it would still hold it up inside of here, even though it might try to kind of weigh it down a little bit. So you would just have some rails on each side that would kind of hold it in place as you brought it in and out and did stuff um, and and things like that. That's probably my only gripe. And because I don't really like that, I just put a rock here just so I don't feel like it's constantly tipping down when I bring it out um, and I can kind of deal with it that way. The other suggestion that I would love to see them give some kind of consideration to would be putting some kind of a, uh, a, a tray or something on one or both sides or the option to be able to do that. Uh, some kind of something uh, that would, maybe it could be a removable thing something there that would kind of work with that now out here on our back patio i've got the tray on the side of the 131 i've also got a bar over here i've got plenty of room that i can kind of do stuff if this was the only thing i had back here though it would be a little bit unhandy when it came time to come out here and do anything to to set stuff down moving meat around or things like that so having some kind of a tray or something on each side would be super handy so if you're looking for something in that thousand dollar ish price range I think that this Roughneck Smoker is a fantastic option. Now, again, there are barrel smokers in the four or $500 range, and if that's your budget, cool. That's totally fine, I understand that. But I believe in the product of what Hasty Bake does, not just simply because they sent this to me. I've got the Legacy 131 that I bought four or five years ago. I believe in their product, and I think they, they really do produce something that is worth talking about. I also love the fact that it's made here in the USA, and I also love the fact that they actually sell individual parts. So if you have specific issues, like with anything, you can can buy those parts so that's a big deal and that that's something that is kind of rare anymore these days so I'll be sure and put up a link for Hasty Bakes website if you use that particular link it doesn't cost you anything different and it helps the channel out if you make a purchase through that link whether you buy a smoker whether you buy some accessories whatever it is there's lots of other things on their website as well and it really does it's something that we appreciate and like I said it doesn't cost you anything any different if you got any questions if you would like to see uh, any other kind of grill content videos maybe you want to see something kind of a comparison between these two grills hey I've got this one do I really need this one I'd be happy to do something like that let me know down in the comments below let me know some of your thoughts 